the big, exciting wildlife concentrations of the world. But you can't not become excited about 2,500 bald eagles. Especially this was an eagle that when you started your study was thought was going to be, might become extinct. Well, it was on the endangered species list. People, when I started my studies, were still shooting it because it was considered vermin. Mm -hmm. But thank God we've changed that whole attitude about people and wildlife. And that changed really in the late 50s, early 60s, particularly due to the incredible work by one lady, um, Rachel Carson. Mm -hmm. Silent her, her, Spring. On Silent Spring. She brought to the world's attention that my God, we may wake up one spring morning and it might be silent. The songbirds yes. will gone, might be gone. Uh, all the big predators, Hence which the word were all silent spring. Hence, silent spring. And the predators in particular were suffering because they were the ones that concentrated as you worked up the food chain. They concentrated the pesticide. So eagles in the eastern states, not here, but eagles in the eastern states, really diminished in numbers due to the pesticide problem. Here. We had our eagles being diminished in number because Alaska, part of the United States, national emblem, national Baldi, emblem yes. but Alaska up until 1953 offered a bounty on eagles. So every time you shot one, if you cut the legs off, you got two bucks from the government. Well, most Alaska fishermen live in Bellingham. the Washington ports. I mean, no, Blaine Bellingham, and Bellingham yeah. and so, so all winter long, they would shoot the Washington birds, most of which were, were British Columbia birds, yes. wintering for three hours in Washington and found themselves getting shot, they'd cut the legs off, take them back to Washington, Alaska, Alaska. To, and collect the bounty. So our birds went way down, and, went, and, and this is kind of neat. In the early 60s when I was doing my thesis, and I did all these aerial surveys with that airplane you saw, I had three pairs of eagles nesting in the greater Vancouver area, only three in the valley. Yes. I now have over 250 pairs. You've got 250 pairs? I have pairs? 250 pairs in the nests that I know of. There's probably another 100 pairs that I haven't found the nest yet. Well, when we did the last show that you and I did on Eagles, yes. which was eight years ago when yep. I had the Rogers and the Shaw show, yep. there was like 35. Maybe 135. Do but you think it was could, already 135? It could have been. Don't think I mean, it, it, the numbers went up pretty quickly, but they're expanding. I mean, even. Um, Karen and I on the way here today, we found one more nest. Yesterday we were headed to somewhere, we found another nest. And this is just in Delta, areas yeah. that I regularly go Places by. Places you drive by all the time. Yeah, they're, they're just cropping up all the time. And we're right now at a, at a peak of the season. Today, well this morning, probably last night, but this morning we got to see the hatching or the, the first appearance of the little baby chick at the Sydney nest. It just hatched either during the night or the well, it wee did hatch because it was a problem that we thought maybe it wasn't going to. No, the Sydney nest we thought was going to hatch. Oh, okay. The nest that didn't hatch, which we were at today also, is what we call Delta Owl. Okay. It's right where Owl, the, uh, oh, the, owl, uh, wild, the, wild the, uh, the Orphan Wildlife League. Was that the one that was on CTV? Bev Day. Yeah, Bev Day is yeah. the biggest rehabilitation center for, for raptors in the Northwest. And I don't know whether the eagles did this to honor her, but they've actually placed a nest right on the same grounds as, as owl. Isn't yes, that incredible? That is. But it's a new nest this year. And unfortunately, the bird did, seems to have done everything right. It sat tentatively. I mean, day after day, the 35 days of normal yeah. incubation, an extra day could be 36 days, but it's four days overdue. And I don't think they're going to hatch. So what's happened? Well, new bird. A lot of things, maybe they didn't learn to mate correctly. I mean, mating is a very delicate thing, balancing on a branch to, to do it. Maybe the eggs weren't fertile. Maybe, maybe they're sterile. Maybe, maybe pesticides have already be a got, to the, got to this bird. In any case, today was a kind of sobering day that I don't think the owl pair is going to hatch. But Sydney did. So, I mean, what you don't gain one place, you gain another. And, and coming up, on April 21 will be the hatching, very likely, of, of the Hornbion, the very famous pair that we the started. The one that this, you started. Because that's we started what we're here to talk about, actually, but we haven't told the audience what we're going to talk about. Now, if anybody out there happens to be watching, you can give us a call if you want to talk to David Hancock. The phone number is 1-866, that's 1-866-980-0499. 
you phone that number, we can actually put you on the air from anywhere in North America. So you can be in Alaska, you can be in San Diego, you can be in Sarasota, Florida, or Albany, New York. Oh, how about Vancouver? Vancouver, you can there phone you too. Yep. There you go. One eight six six nine eight one eight six six nine eight zero zero four nine nine. And of course, if you're not watching it, if you're watching it in archives, then don't bother phoning. But if somebody does want to get hold of you, your phone number is what? Our phone number is HancockWildlife.org. Oh, <laughs> That's our Hancock website. Wildlife. That's your website. <laughs> That's far better than phoning me because I got so many things happening right now. Um, but my my email is and David the, at yeah. HancockWildlife.org, and and so my website is, is where the live eagle cams are yeah. shown. So if somebody goes to HancockWildlife.org, they, they can, they can see, see an eagle. Can we bring one of those up, any chance, Richard? We're not hooked up to the net for David's computer. We're not. I'll, I'll have to. Once he's done his PowerPoint, I'll bring it over on the. Okay, we're going to do a PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Are we? Okay. Okay. Well, you're, you're, it's up right now, so you can. There it is. You can you see want. it on the screen. Well, the, well, let me just do a little introduction. All right. Because <laughs> three years ago, David phoned me one day and he said, "Talk to me about this eagle, something. You don't think it could be whatever?" And I said, "Well, you know, well, you phone Richard, and Richard, he phoned Richard, and the next thing you know, they had an eagle cam on a." Uh, there was already a camera on this eagle's nest, and you can tell the story. Yeah. But they had an eagle camera on a nest on Hornby Island broadcast around the world with as many as 40,000 people an hour watching it. Yeah. And all the time. Yeah. All the time. Simultaneously. And it yeah. was amazing. Simultaneously, all the time. It became the biggest thing ever watched on the Internet, with one exception for a short period of time, when Pope John Paul II or something or other had some For two hours. Time. That's right. And other than that, this man here, David Hancock, and the fellow sitting over there putting this program together, Richard Pitt, put this thing with a lot of other volunteers and so on that have come along mm -hmm. since. But basically, at the start, it was you and Richard. Am I right, right. on that? Richard set you the whole too. thing up. I, uh, we went and got D Doug Carrick, is, is yep. the gentleman, um, a retired school teacher, accountant, and he had the camera coming down onto his television set so he could make a video. He showed the video before I gave a talk one night, and I was so overwhelmed with watching what he had captured in that close-up because the camera was about nine inches from By the head of the eagle. By leaving just a little camera up there. A little this. tiny camera. The camera is about one, three quarters of an inch by two inches by two inches in a little housing. I mean, a minuscule little camera. But I learned more from watching what, what went on in that video than I had ever seen looking at telescopes at 200 yards for 50 years. And so I said to Doug, I phoned him up the next day, I said, why don't you put that on the web? Well, he didn't want to get involved in that technological aspect. So okay. I phoned him. Yep. Your, our, Richard, or whatever. Richard, he's, our, he's our collective Richard. Um, and Richard said, oh, sure, there's nothing to it. We can just do that. He yeah, usually sure. follows it up by a lower breath level of speaking it. Um, it depends on how much money you yes, can do it. Yes, that's right. It's all about cost, money. but he doesn't usually give you a great deal of facts about the cost. Well, it was about $150,000 later of our investment <laughs> that, that actually got out to the public. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Doug Carrick stimulated this thing. We carried it the next step to the public. Doug, by the way, since then, has written a marvelous, marvelous book called The Eagles of Hornby Island, which is his 20-year study. And you published it. And I published it for him, sure. And, and we sell it on our site. So um, we have several books about eagles, my book on eagles, his book on eagles, one on for kids, um, all of which are available um, from the Hancock Wildlife Foundation. Now, uh, just a second here. Have we got someone who wants we to talk? We have somebody up, yes. Let's bring this. We have a visitor. Do we calling in? Hello, can you hear us? She should be able to. Hello, hello. Hello. Yes, hi there. Hi. Sorry, you're very low. Well, I'm shouting across a room to get to you, so... No, talk, talk just your microphone okay. right there. Okay, okay let, me, let me try to turn my phone up. You just, shout out your, you just shout out your question and we'll try and answer it. Okay, well, what, what I want to know is um, that I see a lot of eagles on the beach and there's juveniles and adults. And I was just wondering um, if they're not territorial, um, why they're all feeding together. 